Well, almost. Justice League. The movie we've all been waiting for, or at least everybody who loves superhero movies. And I definitely belong in that category. And I don't care if it's based on Marvel, DC, Dark Horse or anything else as long as the movie is good. So I don't want to hear anything about Marvel fanboy or DC hater. There are films by both those companies that I love and there are some that I don't. So where does Justice League fall in? Right in the middle. I still remember how angry I left the cinema after Batman v Superman. This time I left it entertained, but not really satisfied or exhilarated. It's an enjoyable film for most of its playtime with some heavy flaws, but also some very playful and fun performances and a distinct visual flair. And this is something that's often lacking with Marvel movies and something that I just recently criticized with the new Thor. It was colorful and grand and yet very TV-like and flat. Justice League on the other hand looks incredible, for most parts. Right from the very first frames you get a feeling you're watching something that was just lifted from the actual pages of a comic. Zack Snyder was always a very visual storyteller and again he tells his story in fascinating images. And unlike in Man of Steel and BVS, this time it's not just lighter in tone and with a lot more humor, but it's also much brighter and clear and just a very pleasant thing to look at. I don't want to get deep into the troubled production history of the movie, because by now it has been talked about enough. But just to make it short, Zack Snyder left the project because there was a horrible tragedy in his family and then Joss Whedon, who also did the two Avengers movies for Marvel, stepped in, worked on the screenplay, reshot many scenes and oversaw the post-production. The final result feels very much like a Zack Snyder film, but it also has a touch of Whedon. Like in Watchmen, Snyder uses a song to establish the world we are about to delve into and it couldn't fit more perfectly. The lyrics of Everybody Knows by Leonard Cohen might have been written just for this film and even though the images to the opening credits are a little bit on the nose, they hit every beat for me and I was almost crying. As for the rest of Danny Elfman's original score, I think it was fine, but that's always hard to say after just one viewing. It was already confirmed that he will incorporate parts of the classic Superman the movie theme from John Williams, as well as his very own theme for Tim Burton's Batman to the score. And yes, they are in there, but don't expect prominent roles. Honestly, I was a little bit disappointed by the Superman fanfare, especially by the moment it was used in the film. And yes, it's not really a spoiler that Superman is in the film. As always, this review will be mostly spoiler free, but keep in mind that I want to talk about it. And if you really don't want to know anything, you should come back after you've seen it for yourself. So quick overall thoughts, Justice League is quite entertaining, with good banter from our heroes, it features some very cool action and it has a nice visual style to it. But, and here's the but, and it's not a small one, the story is very thin and when you break it down it's a pretty average big evil guy wants to invade our world and our heroes has to defeat him. There's really not much that I would call clever or particularly intriguing. If you want to be very critical you could say it features a throwaway CGI bad guy that wants to destroy the world. What saved Steppenwolf for me was his out of this world dark voice that sounded a little bit like Bane times 100 and his overall over the topness that was expressed by pulpy sayings and pure evilness. He's after the three mother boxes and I think people who are into comics will enjoy this a lot more than people who are not really. What I liked about it in a strange sense was its similarities to Lord of the Rings. Both from a storytelling as well as from a visual perspective. There's even a flashback that shows an ancient fight between the allied forces of man, Amazonians and Atlanteans against the Dark Lord Sauron himself. I mean Steppenwolf. If they would have put it at the very beginning instead of awkwardly intercutting it with Bruce and Diana taking a walk at the lake, the comparison to Lord of the Rings would have been even stronger. But hey, I liked it. But speaking about some oddities, when it comes to storytelling, Justice League is only two hours long, which makes it one of the shortest superhero films of all time. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with short films, and it's even a little bit strange to call a two hour film short. 
but when it's pretty much the introduction to The Flash, Cyborg, Aquaman, Steppenwolf, the new Jim Gordon played by J.K. Simmons, you kind of wonder how that's going to turn out. Let's say it's not as incomprehensible and weirdly told as BVS in its shorter version and you don't get bored, but at the same time it's not able to give all its heroes enough room to get fully established or even better, some time to develop characters that excel the absolute basics. Again, people who are already familiar with the material will probably enjoy it a lot more than people who are not. But more importantly to me, the rhythm and the way the story was presented and moved from one scene to the next felt kind of clunky. And even more crucial, apart from the wonderful opening credit montage and a great chase scene on the island of Themyscira, the stakes felt very low and they really shouldn't when the world as we know it is about to end. It almost felt as if the filmmakers took the criticisms about the excessive destruction in Man of Steel a little bit too far. Most of the time you could get the feeling that our heroes and Steppenwolf operate in a parallel universe that doesn't really cross paths with the normal world and the insertion of one poor Russian family as token civilians felt very forced. For a movie that finally brings the Justice League together, the most iconic superhero team of all time, it all felt a little bit shallow and also too easy. Sure the comparisons to the first Avengers might be cheap but it's also very natural. And yes, in both films there's a scene where our team is fighting about the way to go on. But here, maybe again due to the short running time, it almost gets resolved immediately. Yes, it takes some time until everybody is in place and the first half of the movie is basically establishing each member with one or two short scenes and then coming together under the leadership of Batman and Wonder Woman. But from then, apart from some very minor hiccups, it all runs quite smoothly. And unfortunately, the whole finale is pretty much just a giant effect brawl and I have missed some really emotional moments. Without spoiling anything, the way Superman returns was very underwhelming. I think it was a big mistake in the first place to kill him just in his second appearance, but that happened. His return is missing impact and there's something happening right after it that is a nod to the comics, but felt very weakly motivated and is again resolved very quickly. But I also can't deny that the mother-son scene got to me. Before I end the review, let me just list more positives. There's a lot of great things in the movie. Heroic moments like Wonder Woman putting herself in the line of fire in the beginning. Flash tipping Diana's sword in her direction to save the day. The effects whenever Flash is using his powers in general looked amazing and was something different from the way Quicksilver was shown. There's also a lot of humor coming from the characters and I wouldn't go as far as calling anyone a big standout star but I was surprised how much I liked Cyborg because I was afraid he would turn out to be the weakest link. And I also think it can't be a coincidence that Cyborg's father is played by Joe Morton, the same actor who portrayed the man who is responsible for the development of the Terminator. Justice League combines Zack Snyder's visual style with the character interactions of Joss Whedon. Its story is super simple and the finale, once again, a giant CGI fest, but it has also a lot to like. It was entertaining but also shallow and not that satisfying. There's also one mid credit scene that's pure fan service and an after credit scene that intrigued me, but for some strange reason, both of them were just in plain all two dimensions, while the movie itself was of course in 3D. In German I'd say, ich hätte mir einen stärkeren Film gewünscht, um die Justice League zu vereinen, aber Spaß hat's trotzdem gemacht. I give Justice League 6 out of 10. It's more like 6.4, but I don't do that. Huh? Oh. That's rude. Alright, that's it like always, comment below and let me know what you think about Justice League. And also let me know who was your favorite character in it. You can hit me up on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram simply at the Jimmy Cage. And if you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up, share, subscribe, whatever you like. And make sure you hit that bell for all I have to tell.